Hello and welcome to another Sales Expert interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Yogesh Shabria, who is in Mumbai in India. And it's nighttime there, uh, Yogesh, correct? Absolutely. Nice to be on your show, John. Yeah. And I love I love your name, especially uh, thank, the golden part. Uh, yeah, thank you. I know, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I have my father to thank for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and this is the first, uh, Yogesh is our first interview uh, live from India, so that's a, that's a nice first for us as well. And the subject of today's interview is a really interesting one. So Yogesh uh, talks about the happy on air way. Uh, and in sales, and, and he says, like, even Mahatma Gandhi was in sales, right? So karma in business and happiness. So explain to me a little bit, Yogesh, what is the happy on air way? So the happy on air way is a philosophy which believes in being happy. It's very important for business, for personal life, for your health, for your relationships, for your sales, for every area. And once we are happy, so let's say what you're doing right now, John. Mm -hmm. Are you happy doing what you're doing? Yeah, no, I'm very happy. Yeah, you're happy. Yeah. You're happy. That's why you do it so well. Oh. But if somebody forced you and told you, John, you need to speak to Yogesh. John, you need to sell. John, you need to write a book called Winning Battle for Sales. <laughs> you wouldn't do it. Nice. Right, so, yeah. But the core philosophy is if we are happy doing what we do, we will do it well. Uh, we will not only do it well, we will even succeed at it. So that's what the Happy On Air way of, is about. It's not only focused on sales or business, it's very holistic because I feel all areas of our life need to be fulfilled for us to truly live a life where we can say, okay, I'm living a good life. That's what it is. Yeah. So let me ask you, you guys, right? So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I enjoy doing what I do. I love it. It's great fun. But, but just like any job, right, you know, there are times when you know, you can't enjoy your, your work 100% of the time, right? So how, how do you, uh, what's your answer to that? You know, how do you deal with those moments when, you know, maybe, you know, you're a little frustrated or things, particularly in sales, right? Maybe sales aren't going your way. So I'll, I'll tell you, I, uh, I don't know if you, if you do it or the viewers do it. So if you do bodybuilding or if you do yoga or you do any form of physical exercise or if you're a boxer, mm -hmm. in the beginning... When you stretch your muscles, they'll hurt. So if you do yoga in the beginning, when you stretch your muscles, they'll hurt. Or if you pick up weights in the beginning, they'll hurt. Mm -hmm. But as you keep going on and on and on, that pain, start. you start to enjoy the pain. So, you know, after a workout, your muscles hurt, but you start to enjoy the pain. It's the same way with sales. You know, you'll face rejection. Uh, there's nobody who hasn't faced rejection. But every time you get up and you say, you know what, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to come out stronger or if I'm not enjoying my job, but I love what I do. So let's say if I'm in sales or if I'm an engineer or if mm -hmm. I'm a doctor, I enjoy what I do. There will definitely be moments where we are not enjoying what we are doing at the moment. But if we keep being persistent, if we keep going on it, we will really achieve our goal or our target. So whatever yeah. it is, if you enjoy it, it becomes easier to do. Yeah, no, that's 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 a good point. Um, yeah, and I do I do kind of martial arts and some boxing, and I definitely know that you know when you first start boxing, particularly like your shoulders are are in a lot of pain, and they they have to adjust the cartilages have to adjust. So it's uh, I, I I I get your uh, analogy there. Um, so what what are some other elements? Uh, what are some other elements of the happy and air way? So uh, some other elements of the happy and air way are also. You know, we look at, I look at a lot of uh, Eastern or Indian or Hindu philosophy, which is very universal. It has nothing to do with religion, but which is very universal, which we can apply it in our business, in our workspace. So one uh, aspect is, for example, the theory of karma. Mm -hmm. So the law of karma says, what you sow, so shall you reap. Right. And this is there the past 5,000 years. What you sow, so shall you reap is a law which says no matter what you do, you will get an equal result. So, for example, if you were to plant a seed of an apple tree, there is no way you would get a chili. <laughs> you wouldn't get an apple tree. Right. Uh, it's the same in business. It's the same in life. If I do good, if I do good for you, if I'm a company, if I'm a salesperson, mm -hmm. and I have your best interest in mind, so if I'm selling your product, but I have your best interest in mind, I will benefit in the end too. 
So if I don't sell you a product that's not good for you, I think of the long term. I was in your place. What right. did I do? Right. How would I treat my own mother, my own father, my own wife, how my own son? Uh, so the theory of karma is universal. Tomorrow when mankind even goes to Mars, I'm sure the theory of karma would be relevant there. It's relevant in India. It's relevant in America. It's relevant everywhere. So we can take the theory of karma and implement it in the business. Yeah, so that's a good, that's a good point around um, sales. So what you're saying is if you approach if you approach selling from a a a good place where you say I, I have a product or a service and after talking to you I really believe that this can help you then you know good things will happen uh, on the flip side if I through the conversation or whatever and more discovery discovered that this isn't going to be a fit for you and it's not the right solution and I'm and I'm able to rather than try and force it home I go okay this may be not a good fit you, you say that to the theory of karma that will come back to me in a good way. Absolutely. I mean, I have so many instances where I've done that, and in the long run, I've benefited much more. Mm -hmm. So you say, um, so tell me a bit about Mahatma Gandhi. Everybody's familiar with, uh, with the great man. Uh, but you say he was also in sales. In what way was he in sales? I'll, I'll tell you why he was in sales. So imagine, imagine you didn't know Mahatma Gandhi today. Mm -hmm. Imagine you had a time machine. We went back uh, 60 years, 70 years, 80 years. Mm -hmm. And somebody told you there's a single man. Uh, he isn't too muscular. I don't think he does boxing. No. He, he's a nice, he's a small built man. He's a lean man. Uh, you know, he doesn't have a lot of money. He doesn't have political contacts. You know, simple guy. And this man is selling an idea, he's selling a single idea against the mightiest empire in the world. Mm -hmm. This empire has all the money in the world, all the military might in the world, they control, I mean, a large parcel of land area, and he's selling an idea. Who do you think would win? Well, most people would say, oh, come on, the empire is going to crush the little man. Absolutely. That's what most people would think. But this man, that is Gandhi, Today we call him Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma means a great soul. Mm -hmm. Atma is soul. Mahatma means a great soul. He sold an idea to over 350 million people, which was the population of India in those days. Mm -hmm. He sold the idea of freedom and to obtain freedom through nonviolence. So he was great at sales because he, were, he managed to sell this idea and without any violence, he did not opt for violence he managed to sell this idea which brought down the British Empire. And once India got independence, I mean, the entire British Empire collapsed. So I think he's a great inspiration. He was a great salesperson. So how do you think, uh, so what lessons can you learn from how, what, what can salespeople take from how he sold that idea? So I think the first thing, the first thing he did was he had immense faith in himself and in his idea. He had faith like crazy. You know, you need to have crazy faith. So no matter people tell you, that's not possible. Uh, Mr. Mahatma Gandhi, are you stupid? You can't fight, you know, empire. They've got guns. They've got all sorts of things. He had immense faith. That's the first thing. So if you're a salesperson, if you have immense faith, you say, no, I'm going to sell and I'm going to sell like crazy. The opposite person can sense your faith. They can feel your energy. So the right. first thing is faith. The second thing is he did not give up. So if you see his life, he was in jail, he faced so many challenges, he never gave up, he was persistent. Mm -hmm. He never gave up. So you know, the British did everything to bring him down, but he didn't give up. In the end, his persistence paid off. The British said, man, Mahatma Gandhi is a great salesperson. We have to give it to him. <laughs> we have to give these guys independence. You know, he's frustrated us, he's irritated us, we have to give it to these people. So they did a lot of civil disobedience movement, he went on to make salt. So the British did not allow the Indians to make salt. He said, no, we need to make salt. So with those strategies, he was able to do. So the first thing is faith. The second thing is persistence. And the third thing is he inspired a team. So he started off alone, but he built a great team. He had a team with him. He had people all over the world. And that's what he did. So if you're a salesperson, you need to build a team. You need to build support. You need to build the community. And he was also very good at branding. Right. I'll tell you how. Yes, go on. Because before, I'll tell you how. So because Ma Gandhi earlier used to live in South Africa. Yeah. And if you see his images earlier, he always wore a nice tie and a suit. 
mm-hmm. but once he started the struggle for independence he told people you know what people in india don't have money to wear clothes so i shall roam naked and even when he went to uh, britain he he wore his trademark clothes he was half naked so that was branding so he was great at branding too so these are certain things every sales person every business person can learn from him yeah no that's fantastic uh, i mean i love that idea and especially i mean starting at the fundamental of having faith in your idea so having faith in your product or your service having faith in your ability as a sales person your ability to create value because let's face it if if you flip that over if you don't really have faith in your product or you don't have faith in yourself you're going to communicate the opposite right absolutely so people you know even before you speak they'll sense the way you walk the way you you know your body language your tone and if you're not honest they'll sense it mm-hmm. it's like in a relationship if i go to my wife and i tell her i love you but i say you know half heartedly <laughs> she'll know but if i say it with passion she'll realize it so that's what it is you know that's what it is about yeah. yeah and the second point that you 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 made there is about the belief piece right is um is because obviously in sales just like i'm sure in the early days of, of gandhi you know you get a lot of setbacks maybe maybe your quota looks really huge at the beginning of the year and you're like oh my goodness there's no way i'm going to get there you're saying that you need to flip that over and look at it and say not only am i going to get there but i'm probably going to get further Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. So what? Absolutely. Are, yeah. So what are some of the ways you have? Because you do a lot of work, obviously, with um, uh, motivation speaking and helping companies. How have you seen this work with some of the uh, people you've worked with? What are the differences you've seen when you've got them to change their mindsets? So you know, there are a couple of exercises I do. I you know, even when I do a lot of speaking, I believe. the best way for us to learn is for for somebody to take action i mean i did not go to harvard it's a great university but i the best thing we could do is simply take action so i'll tell you one thing uh, i challenge people all the time i mean all your viewers can try this out i'm sure they're great at sales already since they took you but they could still try this out <laughs> so there's a coffee challenge i like to do so i tell people go to the nearest coffee shop starbucks or whichever it is uh go to the nearest coffee shop and get someone to buy you a coffee yeah. go to the nearest coffee shop it's a coffee challenge mm-hmm. uh and get someone to buy you a coffee and you know i have ceos i have people all sorts of people and in the beginning so many of them find it difficult sure so they tell me you know why should we do it you know i said uh, because you're pushing yourself you're pushing your mind if you can get someone to buy you a coffee you can get them to buy you anything it's not that <laughs> difficult and uh, it's very interesting so somebody told me yogesh but it wouldn't that be unethical i said no it wouldn't be unethical you could be honest with them and you could tell them i have i have been in a program with yogesh chavria <laughs> and he told me to try this out and in the end people come back and say you know people are friendly people are nice we had a laugh we had a chat uh, and you know that's it. that's what it is it's just in our mind i think a lot of blockages Uh, I can't do this, or I can't. I can't do that. It's just in our mind. Yeah, and, and that's what it is. So once we change our mindset, we can do anything. Yeah, I mean that's 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 a great example because I think you're right. I think if you can overcome, and I think this is what afflicts obviously a lot of salespeople, particularly if things aren't going well, is all those doubts creep in, and before they even walk through the door of the coffee shop, they're like. nobody's going to buy me a coffee and uh, and you know and guess what nobody is going to buy them a coffee at that point if they go in with that attitude but like you said if you engage in a friendly trustworthy open fashion you know then maybe things can happen for you absolutely i mean i have had people invite me over to stay you know i have had all sorts of things and you know the real world is the best way to practice our sales techniques and you know be honest be open be friendly i mean sales is all about making new friends and meeting new people so what are some of, what are some of the other exercises maybe there's another exercise you also use is there uh yeah i i use other exercises too so another exercise i like to use with people is uh you know after the coffee challenge i also like people in that challenge itself to then once they have established a rapport try to sell a product or service they have so let's say uh you are a car sales person can you sell a car to the person who just bought you a coffee yeah and if you cannot 
can you ask them for a reference? Right. So let's say, let's say that person doesn't want to buy a car. You can tell them, okay, can you tell me four or five people in your circle who you think might want to buy a car? So asking for a reference also from somebody who's not buying leads to other contacts. It's a link, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's an interesting. So basically you get them to buy you a cup of coffee and then you either sell them a car or you get a reference from them. I mean, that's a... That that's a uh, that's a great challenge, and I guess if you can do if you can do that, then really everything else after that should be pretty straightforward. And after that, I tell them one more thing, which is always look for alliances. So let's say you're a car salesperson, and the you can ask the other person, you know, what is it that you do? And for example, they say we sell insurance. You can have a tie-up. You can say every person who buys a car from me, I will be happy to recommend your insurance to them. So further, you can further generate revenue. You can always come up with things if you're friendly, if you're open, and you're also looking to help. You know, maybe that person is selling something else. If you can help them with your network, it's always nice. Again, the theory of karma. Yeah. If you can help the opposite person increase their sales and business, they always remember you. They'll say, oh, yeah, John is a great guy. You know, I have a problem. He helped me out. I should give back to him. So again, it's investing, uh, you know, in your karma in a nice way. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Well, we're bumping up against the end of our time, uh, Yogesh. This has been fascinating. Um, so before we go, uh, will you tell people a little bit more about yourself, how they can learn more about you, how they can contact you? Sure. So, uh, I mean, my life changed. I was five years old. My grandparents were refugees. Uh, we couldn't afford even the bus. And in India, we have the auto, the three-wheeler. We couldn't sure. even afford that. So I started selling at the age of five. And I think sales has been the best thing. I love selling. You can check out. You could just go to happyonair.com. That is H-A-P-P-I-O-N-A-I-R-E.com. Uh, check out all the books we have. And I would love to see you. I would love to see you. I would love to come to America, do a couple of sessions, seminars, have fun, and increase sales. Yeah, well, hopefully, um, Yogesh, you know, we do uh, we do seminars and breakfasts occasionally. So hopefully uh, we can feature you one of those in the not-too-distant future. And maybe in the meantime, maybe it's a good idea for people to uh, look up on Netflix and watch the movie Gandhi again and remind themselves about what he did and how uh, you can apply that to your own life. Sure, John. Thank you very much for the invite. I'll take it up. I shall see you in America. And you're also most welcome to Mumbai, to India for a holiday. Yeah. Or a seminar. Or a seminar, yeah, and I just may well take you up on that too. Thank you, Yogesh. This has been great. John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Thanks for another great expert inside interview. Take care. Bye. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.